Hello everyone and welcome back. It's time for another round of custom Thomas Wooden Railway models and the engines I have in front of you here today are my custom Coldy Fell Railway engines. Now if you are a big Thomas and Friends fan you probably know who these engines are and um, where they work on the island of Sodor but if you don't I mean that's not necessarily a bad thing because these engines really have not received a lot of attention over the years. They were only featured in one story in the rail Railway series, or one book, I should stay with, uh, should say, with multiple stories, and only a few engines have received uh, widespread pieces of merchandise over the years. For example, off the top of my head, I can think of Coldy himself received three different wooden railway versions, including one you see on screen right now. He also received a at least a take along um, piece of merchandise, and then a couple of the engines received Ertl pieces of merchandise back in like the 90s and maybe even the early 2000s. So, to the casual Thomas and Friends fan, these engines are mostly forgotten. However, if you are a big Thomas and Friends fan, you know that these engines are very important to the island of Sodor. And so, I am not the, per uh, the first person to do this. In fact, many people over the years have created. Uh, lots of different versions of the Coldy Fell engines in various forms of merchandise. Um, but I thought I would give my, you know, shot at it. And uh, I have created seven custom engines for the Coldy Fell Railway. And in just a moment, um, I'm going to take you through all of them and kind of explain how each of them were made, what faces I chose, the nameplates, the numbers, everything like that. So without further ado, let's get started. So I think the easiest way to do this is just going to do each engine one at a time and since the engines do happen to be numbered, it should be pretty easy to just go down the line and tell you guys everything about these custom Coldy Fell engines that I created. So let's start right down with number one whose name is Godred. Um, for those who know, Godred is the troublemaker, I should say was the troublemaker on the Coldy Fell Railway. Um, the story, and it's kind of up to interpretation as to whether this story actually happened or not, um, but Coldy tells the story to the narrow gauge engines and he said that Godred was a very troublesome engine who was always grumpy and it's based on a real life accident that happened on a mountain railway. Um, unfortunately, Godred crashed and fell off the rails and basically, um, in a very dark and you know twisting turn of events, uh, he was cannibalized to repair the other engines on the railway because the owners or the operators either didn't have enough money or they didn't really care enough to repair Godred, which is a very different turn compared to the Sir Topham hat that we know in the Thomas and Friends TV series who seemingly just has enough money and patience to repair any engine that he wants. Um, so it is a little bit of a dark story. In fact, I'd say it's way darker than the classic, you know, Henry stuck in the tunnel and he was left there that, you know, the average person, if they know something about Thomas and Friends and they've been on the internet in the past 10 years, uh, they've definitely heard the sad story of Henry, but the story of Godred is, um, a, is much darker in my opinion. So anyway, with all of these Coldy Fell engines, they were made from a 2015 Coldy that was made by Fisher Price and Mattel. So they are all going to have the same body and this was extremely important for me because I wanted the engines to be uniform because that's how they are displayed um, in the railway series. So Godred here is just made from a 2015 Coldy and as, you, as you're going to see all the engines have Coldy underneath. And basically the only changes I had to make with all of these customs is I had to give them a new face and new nameplates. Now you can probably say well that tape is like so easy to see like what's the point in that. And, um, you know, these were made quite a while back, probably over a year ago, maybe even a year and a half ago, and I'm just getting around to making a video of them. So in the future, I might come back and try to adhere these in a different way, um, probably find some tape that is a little bit more transparent. Um, for example, when I did my yellow Ben custom a while back, um, I think I used a different type of tape because that blended in really well, and you really couldn't even see that there was tape holding the, the nameplate on. So Godred here, um, I elected to use the face belonging to the big city engine, as you can see uh, to the left there. And I chose that face because it is a grumpy face. And I mean, the thing with the Coldy Fell engines is that the majority of them, we don't know their personalities, we don't know what they're like. It's all up to interpretation, but we do know the personalities of Godred, we know Coldy, 
and pretty much, as you're going to find out, Lord Harry or Patrick. So out of the eight engines, um, we only know like the personalities and we only know just a little bit about like three of them. But we know that Godred is cranky. Um, he's, I mean, he's almost kind of like a diesel figure where it's just like nothing's ever good enough and he likes to complain a lot and he's just grumpy all the time. And so when it came to creating these customs, you know, I obviously like couldn't use a diesel face, for example, because that's rectangular. So I had to pretty much go down the line and look at all the different faces we've had over the years. Um, and I chose the big city engine because it is kind of a face of like, you know, a little bit of disgust and annoyance. Um, but it's also kind of a snooty face. That's the the vibe that I get from him. Like, oh, like he's he's better than the other engines. He doesn't have time for their shenanigans. So another thing I did with all the customs is that I didn't bother changing these back faces. I mean, I don't even know how you would do that unless you came in with some type of, you know, molding abilities and were able to give them different expressions. But that's a fun fact about the Coldy Fell engines. If you didn't know, they have faces on the front and the rear because they are mountain engines and their railway is a one-way track up a mountain. And so instead of turning around at the top of the hill and then having to basically like slide down the hill forwards, they cautiously reverse backwards. And I'm not 100% exactly like how that's supposed to work. I kind of liken it to like the backup camera of a car, you know, like when you're driving along and you obviously have, you know, your eyes out the windshield, but then if you stop and put the car into reverse, for example, you'll sort of like engage the backup camera. So imagine like as soon as like Coldy is put into reverse or another engine, um, as they head down the mountain, basically these eyes and this face is engaged and I don't really know what happens with this one. Does it go dormant? Does it sleep? Does it you know, totally motionless. I really couldn't tell you. That's kind of part of the, the fun of the lore with the Coldy Fell engines, to be quite honest. So I really like Godred's face. Um, there aren't like a, a too lot of like disgusted or non-happy faces in the Thomas Wooden Railway line. So the choice was pretty simple. I think one thing you'll notice about this engine is that um, his face does happen to be like a tiny bit bigger than some of the other engines. For example, here's Coldy, who's completely like unmodified. You can see his face is like a tiny bit bigger than Coldy's, but honestly, I don't think it's that big of a deal. So this is the big city engine that belongs to me, but then this is the big city engine part um, that was actually used for the custom, and I have the smoke box here as well. And I honestly, I did this so long ago, I can't remember why, I think I started to cut into the smoke box here and then there was like a screw or a nail sitting there that wouldn't let the face be released or something like that so then i had to come back and actually cut into this area so that's why i i wouldn't really say i botched it because i mean when i started this when i did this custom i knew i was going to tear apart a train but it's always nice if possible to sort of save as much of the the donor body as you can so anyway I think that's gonna do it for Godred, but I just wanted to show off the actual, you know, body here that I used um, for the custom. And this came off of eBay. It was probably like 15 or $20. And I'm looking around and I don't think I have the tender for this. So I wanna say it just came with the body. It didn't come with the tender or anything like that. So that is Godred, number one. Next up, we have Ernest, who is number two. And if you know anything about Thomas Wooden Railway, this one actually took me a while to figure out and you'll find out why. But that face comes from Steven. And this version of Steven is the one I use in my series. He's technically Royal Bunting Steven, but the normal Steven has the exact same expression as far as I know. So Ernest, uh, Ernest's face came about actually from the inspiration of Enterprising Engine 93 because he did some Coldy Fell customs a couple of years ago and actually made like a whole movie <laughs> about them, which was very entertaining. Um, and so when it came time for me to do my own Coldy Fell engines, I wanted to pay tribute to him in some fashion because I was definitely going to use um, some of the ideas and um, things that he had, you know, previously done. Um, but I didn't want to exactly copy all of his Coldy Fell engines because, I mean, that just wouldn't be very creative or original. However, when it comes to Ernest here and this Stephen face, I believe this is a really good face. And the reason I, and the reason I believe that is because when I first saw 
Enterprising Engines Custom here that used the Steven face, I had absolutely no idea what face that was. Like I knew it was a Thomas face, but I couldn't pinpoint the engine. And I think that's the beauty of finding specific faces for custom engines. It's like, you know, you want the face to accomplish what it's set out to accomplish. But if, if the uh, person looking at the custom cannot trace back to you know what engine that's supposed to be, I think that's like a major plus. So Ernest here is a direct reference and maybe even a tribute to the Ernest that was created by Enterprising Engine 93. And of course we have the numbers and the nameplate and um, even on the back there as well. So that is why I elected to go for the Steven face right there. And very quickly, here is the Steven. Actually, it is a Royal Bunting Steven that I used for this custom. I believe um, I actually had one of these in my possession um, many, many years ago. There was a, I think it was called the Steven and the Castle Coach 2-pack um, that was very popular to me because it came with like this flat open coach that provided like a lot of custom abilities. For example, I had um, somebody turn Steven's flat coaches into like Arsdale open coaches, for example. Um, just the custom opportunity there was really, really good. So I ended up buying a lot of these Steven and the Castle Coach two packs, and they weren't that expensive because at the time, like Thomas Wooden Railway was mostly on discount at like TJ Maxx, Marshalls, and Home Goods, and I was finding these Steven and the Castle Coach two packs for like six or seven dollars each, and I'm like, this is such a good deal. So I ended up having a bunch of Stevens, and I believe I sold a few of them. I may have given them to a couple of people, but then I had like one or two left over, and I was like, you know what? This is perfect. This is great so that I don't have to go on eBay and find like a used Steven and try to find the face. So that's where the face came from, from Ernest there. And Ernest is one of those weird characters just because we know pretty much absolutely nothing about him. But if the face is in, in any if the face is any indication, I bet he's like a happy, cheerful fellow who's kind of like Coldy and just uh, just wants to do the best he can and is obviously very happy and proud to be a mountain engine. So there is Ernest, number two. Now let's move on to Wilfred, number three. And if you know anything about the Thomas Wooden Railway line, you may recognize that face. That is a that is a Stepney face right there, although I even hesitate to call it a Stepney face because it really doesn't look like Stepney. But this is what I talked about earlier because the face doesn't look like Stepney. I believe that makes this the perfect opportunity for a custom engine. So as far as I know, there's not a whole lot known about Wilfred. It's like it was one of, you know, like... The Coldy Fell engines, they appear in the background of a lot of the stories because, you know, the main, many of the stories are devoted to, like, Coldy's experiences, and then there's, like, a whole plot line with a couple of other characters that we'll look at here earlier, or excuse me, in just a moment. Um, but Wilfred, to me, he's kind of just, like, um, completely random, and you can give him whatever personality you want. So um, printing, out, printing out these um, nameplates and numbers was actually very tricky because I, I had to do a lot of testing to get the size right. And one of the reasons, you're probably wondering why I use so much tape. Well, I was hoping that the, the tape wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to see it as much as you do. So I was like, well, I'd rather put on extra tape like more than enough to make sure that the number doesn't fall off versus me, you know, barely putting on enough tape. And personally, I like the idea of using clear tape versus like trying to glue, you know, the nameplates and the numbers to the engines. I feel like that can get a little bit messy, especially if you don't get it right. And then you can always come along, um, like unfortunately here, I could come along with my finger and actually start peeling back the tape here. But if the tape wasn't there, you're actually gonna start peeling back the nameplate itself. And so the tape is just designed to keep everything in place. So Wilfred here, as you guys heard earlier, is based on Stepney to the left there. And honestly, this second version of Stepney was sold for a couple of years. And I've never liked this version of Stepney. You know, the face doesn't look right. The body doesn't look right. It really is probably, it's one of the um, few, but honestly, one of the most prominent learning curve gaffes or mistakes over the years. Um, it, it, unfortunately, it just doesn't look like Stepney. Um, for uh, the Stepney that I use in my series is the very first version, and it just has like a skinnier body, skinnier boiler, smaller face, smaller smoke box, and the expression isn't perfect. Um, but I feel like, you know, if you were have to, having to choose one or the other, I would definitely go with that first version of Stepney from the 90s. 
It was my hope a couple of years ago when uh, Mattel took over the range and they were reintroducing all these characters, for example, Coldy, um, that they would actually come along and, and do their own version of Stepney. Stepney. And I was um, pretty optimistic that they would do a good job, you know, because, you know, they introduced or reintroduced all these characters that hadn't seen the light of day in several years, such as like D199 and the Flying Scotsman and even like Lady, for example, and they did a pretty good job. So it was my hope that we would get um, eventually a learn, or excuse me, you know, a Mattel version of Stepney. Unfortunately, that was never the case. And with the way the TV series is trending in the merchandise, I honestly don't think we'll ever see another wooden railway version of Stepney, sadly. But anyway, that is Wilfred, the number three engine on the Coldy Fell Railway. And speaking of the Coldy Fell Railway, um, this engine here, Coldy, is actually named after the railway. And I did not do any modifications to this Coldy because this is how um, Mattel and Fisher Price released him around 2015 or so. There's a lot of people out there um, who prefer the second version of Coldy to this one. Um, he's a that second version made by Learning Curve. Probably the styling is a lot better. The body's a lot better. There's these side plates on the sides that cover the wheels, which is very accurate to how Coldy looks. Um, but the thing is, is when I was thinking about doing these customs and I knew I was going to have to make like seven different customs, it was going to be really um, time consuming and honestly really expensive to try and get seven of those um, second version of Coldy because not all that was only introduced in like an apple orchard accessory pack So not a lot of them exist and it's not that they're expensive But it's like when you try to get seven of them It's going to add up and then of course if I was going to do these customs I would want them to look nice so I would be on the lookout for like mint or um, You know near perfect renditions of Coldy um, that second generation and honestly it was just going to be too much of a hassle whereas this Coldy, this model had been discontinued by the time I decided to do these customs but um, this was always something that I had in mind so even when Coldy was available in stores and Thomas Wooden Railway prices weren't crazy I was already collecting these Coldies and I was like you know what if I end up not doing these customs I can just give them away or resell them or something like that so um, when Coldy was released like this probably around like 2016 or 2017 um, I very quickly realized like you know what if I want to do Coldy Fell customs in the future this is my chance um, this actually isn't my original Coldy. Um, I made a little bit of a mistake while trying to work on these customs. This was my very first attempt to get the face off of one of these Coldy models. Um, so this is the one that was actually, this is like the very first Coldy that I had that was used in my series a couple of years ago for like that one Coldy episode that I did. And unfortunately, I kind of botched getting the face off of it. Um, you'll notice some of the engines have like a little bit of wear and tear right around the, where the face would be. And honestly, that was just a product of trying to get these faces off. I came in with some pliers. And since I knew I wasn't going to be using reusing the Coldy faces, I could pretty much tear up Coldy's face trying to get it off of the model while keeping um, the rest of the body intact because that's obviously what we're going to be using. So unfortunately I messed up here and I ended up getting some scratches on the side and I was like, well, that's a shame, but I thought I could come in and try to um, paint over where I had scratched some things. And this was, this is right around when the pandemic began and everybody was at home and everybody was looking for something to do. And for some reason, like all of the paint in the stores disappeared because everybody was like, well, if I'm going to be stuck at home, I might as well like build a puzzle or paint or something like that. So when I went looking for the paint, I tried to match it up as best as I could. But as you can see, I didn't get the color right. Um, over here, it's way too dark. And then I like tried to blend it in and it starts to look a little bit better over here. But I was like, you know what? This is this is not going to look good no matter how you slice it or dice it. So this is actually a failed attempt. I wanted to show this off because not everything goes according to plan. So yeah, that was a bit of a botched attempt. And then what I had to do, since I was down a Coldy model, I had one new in box that I was intending to keep new in box. Um, but you know, it's kind of pointless to make all these custom Coldy Fell engines. And then at the end of the day, if you don't have a Coldy to go with them, it's like, well, that was kind of a waste. So. Coldy had to be unboxed here, which isn't a big deal, but Coldy new in box actually has become pretty collectible and sought after, so that was a shame. And then somehow I, I've already chipped this item, and it hasn't been used in like any videos, and I don't know how that's possible. But anyway, I wanted to show Coldy off there so that you guys could see kind of like what the baseline is for all of these engines. 
Let's move on to number five. This character, I'm not really sure 100% how to pronounce his name. Um, my initial impression would be to call him Shane Dooney. But if you look at his name and how it is spelled, there is an I, which makes me want to say Shane Dooney. And I actually did the narration for a Coldy Fell video a couple of years ago for Wong Village, if you've ever heard of them. He's actually made some custom Thomas Wooden Railway items for me in the past. But he was making a Coldy Fell movie and he asked me to be... Actually, I don't think I was the narrator. Maybe I was like the controller or something. I don't know. It was like two and a half years ago. I apologize. So I'm sure people in the comments are going to give me their opinion about how to pronounce this name. Um, phonetically, I think that's the word. I want to call it Shane Duini. <laughs> But that sounds just like a little bit too awkward. And so, and honestly, before I even had these engines, I never really bothered how to say their names because it was never an issue. And honestly, if you had asked me to name the number five engine on the Coldy Fell Railway, I probably would have just said Shane Dooney. Um, so Shane Dooney sounds a lot more natural to me, but then looking at the way the name is spelled, I want to say Shane Dooney. Anyway... Here is the number five engine, and you guys can probably tell um, this used a porter face. I believe I got like a, it was actually probably a new in box porter off of eBay. It was super cheap. It was like 10 bucks with shipping, well, free shipping, which is crazy. Um, so I came in and I do have Porter's um, donor body over here that I'll show off in a second. But I chose Porter's face because other people have used his face for custom Thomas Wooden Railway models over the years. And again, it's one of those faces where it's like you look at it and personally, I cannot put the face to an engine. When I see it like this all alone, I see the thicker eyebrows and the expression. I honestly cannot place the engine until, you know, I, I look at Porter here and I'm like, oh yeah, well that's obviously like a Porter face. Um, oh, I forgot. Let me bring this up real quick. This is the body that I use for Stepney. I believe I actually traded this with somebody in the Thomas Wooden Railway community. Um, I can't remember what I traded them for. Because um, if I had another one of these, I would have just used it for a custom. Um, but anyway, when they sent it to me, it completely broke off, which makes me believe this might have been broken to begin with. That wasn't a big deal. That's where Stepney's face came from. I apologize for missing that. And then here is where Porter's face came from. Again, this came from eBay. It was new in box. I just chopped the face off with a saw. A lot of other people out there in the community have like these really fancy power tools and everything. But honestly, when it comes to removing faces, um, and trying to do custom work. I'm not very good at it to begin with. And so I really just use like a handsaw and it's not messy, but it gets the job done. And since I'm not planning on using this engine for anything else, maybe like I'll repaint it as a scrap engine one day, it really isn't that big of a deal. So anyway, that's Shane Dooney, Shane Dooney, the number five engine on the Coldy Fell Railway. And his face came from a Porter model. I'm getting a little crowded over here to my right hand side. But anyway, let's move on to probably an engine you guys are looking forward to. Besides um, Coldy and Godred, this is probably the other um, most well-known Coldy Fell engine out there. This is Lord Harry, AKA number six, AKA Patrick. Yes, he has three names. And for those who are unfamiliar, a couple of stories in the Coldy Fell um, Mountain Engines book in the Railway series, um, not only deal with like Coldy and his potential backstory, but it's also his return to the Coldy Fell Railway after he's been overhauled in Switzerland. And one of the engines um, that takes like a starring role in those stories is this number six engine. He's originally known as Lord Harry, but then I really can't remember off the top of my head. It's been a while. He does something to lose his name. I don't know if he causes an accident or if he's just being a naughty engine, um, but he loses his name. The, the owner or the railway like revokes his name. So he's running around without a name. He's just known as number six, which I think sounds silly, but in, but when it comes to like these Thomas and Friends engines who have faces and personalities, their name means everything to them. That's why it's kind of like an insult um, to the diesels on the other railway. They are, they're only known by numbers, but when you come to Sodor, you get an actual name and it's a lot more you know personable. So Lord Harry loses his name and then through basically an act of, I would say valor and courageousness, um, he saves some hikers or mountain climbers 
um, during a very scary storm situation, um, and he's basically becomes like a really useful engine again and all that. And as a reward, he is given a new name, and I believe he is named after one of the hikers who he rescued, whose name is Patrick. Um, so the name Patrick wasn't a big deal because at the time the cement mixer didn't exist. Obviously these stories, I think they were written in the maybe the late 50s or the early 60s. Um, but it is interesting that there are technically, um, like there are two Olivers, there are two Patricks on Sodor. Um, speaking of Oliver, you can kind of see where the face came from there. That is a 2006 reissue of Oliver that was made by Learning Curve. And again, I chose this face because, like, it's an okay Oliver face, but I've never, ever seen Oliver make that expression in the model series or the CGI series. And it's not a bad face, but I think there, there's a little bit of a jump you have to make um, putting two and two together before you can say, like, oh, yeah, that is an Oliver face. Um, so Lord Harry here, I elected to give him the name Lord Harry because in case if I ever want to make my own little episodes or series about the Coldy Fell engines, which is not out of the realm of possibility, although I will admit I don't have any active plans to do that at this moment. Um, I thought, it, you know, we'd obviously start off as Lord Harry. And then honestly, it kind of complicates things because there already is a Patrick on Sodor and it's not like the two Olivers. You know, we got one here and the excavator. It's not like they can't coexist, but it honestly is just more confusing than anything else. So that is the number six engine, Lord Harry. And this was also a, um, a trade that I made with somebody in the community. I apologize. I can't remember all the names. This happened like a year and a half ago. Um, but I had a new inbox 2006 Oliver, I think that I bought several years ago off of eBay for like $7, something super cheap. And I already had one new inbox, so I had a duplicate. And it was like, yeah, I could take this Oliver out of the box and, you know, use his face for this custom. But I think it would be better worth my time to find somebody who has one already out of the box, who wants one new inbox, and we can make a trade and we can kind of both get what we want. Um, because it's like once you take an item out of the box, um, there's no going back. And so that's why I kind of reached out to the Thomas community and I was like, I'm looking for these specific engines. I'm willing to trade these engines. And so a happy trade was made. And as far as I know, the person still has that new in box, Oliver, I want to say. So there is Lord Harry, number six. We're getting towards the end here, especially towards, you know, the more obscure Coldy Fell railway engines. Uh, we have, and I'm not sure about this name either. When I want to, how I pronounce it is Alaric. I know some people are probably going to say, well, it's Alaric or Al Alaric, or, I, you know, I don't know where you put the stress on the word there. But when I look at this name, um, like I want to, I want to say Eric, I want to, it's like Al Eric, A-L space Eric, Al Eric, but that doesn't sound, you know, too smooth either. So Alaric, Alaric. A mate Alaric kind of sounds good too. Anyway, that is the number seven engine, and this was made from a 2002 or 2003 Fergus from the Learning Curve era. Um, I got this Fergus off of eBay for extremely cheap. Um, this is the one from my personal collection that I had back when I started YouTube, and up until like the most recent season of my series, I was using this Fergus. Um, but here is the donor Fergus, again, came from eBay, and all I was really worried about, when I look for these donor engines, I only care about the face. I don't care about the condition of anything else, of the wheels, of the smokes back, excuse me, smokestack. A dog could chew on this back part here, and I wouldn't really care, to be quite honest. But as you can see, we got a little bit of plastic part peeling off there. Oh, it completely fell off, actually. Um, but yeah, that's where that came from. And I chose this face because again, like it kind of looks like a Fergus face, but at the same time, it really like doesn't. And it's also a very unusual face. Um, uh, Fergus kind of has like a chunky face. And so I thought it would just kind of break up the monotony of like all these happy smiling faces that, you know, really don't convey any personality. So honestly, I was just looking for something different when I was, when I was looking for this face. So I don't know if I showed this engine off all the way around or not, but at this point it's, it's pretty self-explanatory. We got name plates and numbers on both sides. So we got three numbers total with one on the back and then two name plates. So that's five things you got a sticker on each of these engines. And I'll be very upfront with you guys, these customs were not very hard. If you have the time and the money and the patience, these are probably things you could do. Unfortunately, your biggest hindrance is just going to be the price of all of the coldies. 
because Thomas Wooden Railway prices are crazy. And unfor uh, fortunately, I had like the the sense of mind, I don't know, like not the peace of mind, but I, I when I, this was happening a couple of years ago and when Thomas Wooden Railway prices were starting to creep up after the range had been discontinued, um, I at least had the idea to start saving for these. And I bought a couple off of eBay, but honestly, this was back when like toy stores still sell uh, Thomas Wooden Railway. And you could go to Barnes and Noble and get a coldie for $15 and nobody would bat an eye. And now it's like, you know, coldies are selling for $40, $50, $60 dollars new in box. It's pretty crazy. So that is Alaric, Alaric. Let me know what in the comments below how you would pronounce that name. And finally, last but not least, <laughs> we get down to the very end here. Uh, you can tell this guy has a, has a little bit of a different face. This is Eric. And so that the fact that, you know, the previous engine we just took a, took a look at was, I'd, like, I want to say it's Alaric, but then we have an Eric here. So Alaric and Eric, Alaric and Eric, like, that just seems way too familiar. So that makes me want to say Alaric. But personally, I have never met an Alaric. I don't know if that's maybe a more British name or something like that. Um, but anyway, this is Eric. He is the number eight engine. And a couple of these characters, I want to say, like, some of them didn't even appear in the Railway series. Um, they were, the only reason we know about them is that the Reverend in his writings or the lore of Sodor has revealed that, yes, you know, there was actually more Coldy Fell engines. And basically these eight that I've showed off in this video are, like, definitive, like, yes, we know they exist in the world of, of Thomas and Friends or something like that. So this is Eric, and you can tell that his face is a little bit different, and that is actually because this is a knockoff Reneus face, I believe. Um, it is not a real Thomas Wooden Railway face. Um, in the future, I mean, I've had this custom done for like a year and a half, and the face really hasn't bothered me, but it becomes a little bit more jarring. Let's say, you know, if you if you do this, you can tell that, well, they're, they're obviously made out of a little bit different material. Both are like pretty glossy, um, but like this one is not as white. It's especially in person. The lighting is a little weird right now, but in person, this face just isn't as bright and as white as Oliver's face, for example, who is used on um, Lord Harry. So I am not really sure if I'm going to come in and replace the face, for example, with like Reneus's face right here. So imagine like that's really, that's really all that we would do there. Um, it's not that big of a change, which is why I haven't done it. And honestly, none of these faces are like glued on or anything like that. They are just stuck on with um, like sticky putty, silly putty, whatever you want to call it. So the faces are easily removable. Um, and that would be something really easy to do if I wanted. Um, the good news is, is that Reneus you see in the background is like a 2003 Reneus. It looks nothing like Reneus, especially the white wheels and the expressions even off. But that's kind of why I chose this face because it really doesn't look like Reneus. Like we can all look at this face and say, yes, that face belongs to a Reneus wooden railway toy. But I think we're all in agreement when I say that but that, that's not what Reneus looks like, especially in the TV series at the time. He looked way, way different. Um, the good news is, is that Reneus, that 2003 Reneus, is honestly pretty easy to find. There were a lot of them made, and it's not a very desirable item just because it's not a very good Thomas Wooden Railway toy. Um, so doing a face swap with that official Reneus in the background there wouldn't be that big of a deal, honestly. Um, it's just something that I haven't done just because it's not really like a huge priority. If I ever wanted to take the next step and like work on a series or anything like that with these engines and I had to make them quote unquote screen ready, um, it may it might be something I do in the future, but as of right now, um, I'm really honestly perfectly okay with with this uh, with this like fake Reneus face for Eric. And honestly, it makes him it makes him different. Um, it makes him completely completely different to to all the other engines uh, we've taken a look at. I think for this part of the video, I think that's it. Although I do have something I do want to show real quick to you guys. You're probably wondering whatever happened to all the faces that I tore off of these engines. Well, here's what they look like. Apologies if the camera doesn't focus. So yeah, I came in with some pliers and because I had to preserve the smoke box area and the body for the finished custom, I just came in and tore these faces off. And honestly, most of them do not look very good, but um, you can kind of tell some of these, like I, I was able to tear off pretty quick, like this one. In the scheme of things, not a whole lot of damage. This one, 
what I ended up having to do is you have to take the pliers and twist it and you have to break this connection in the back here where the plastic is. And then basically the whole face can spin around like this. And then like if you do like one full rotation, it breaks again and then the face just kind of pops off. So um, I have these in a bag here. I just keep them just for fun. And I got like one more, I got one more right here. So at one point I had a whole army of normal coldies that, that weren't beat up. And yeah, this one, oh boy, look at that. You can kind of tell, I think like the beat up ones are the first ones that I, I, that I did and I really didn't know what I was doing, but by like the sixth or the seventh one, it was like, yeah, I, I gotten a little bit better. So anyway, I just wanted to show those faces off. Um, I should have, if my numbers are right, I should have like seven of those faces, may, probably eight because I messed up that first custom that I showed off. Um, but anyway, uh, let me re-rack all of the engines and we'll do one last parting shot. So those are all of my Coldy Fell Railway engines that I made. Um, as I said earlier, I'm not really sure about the future of these in terms of my series, but for the most part, these customs were pretty straightforward. Um, there were just a couple of face swaps, and honestly, the biggest challenge was buying enough Coldies to turn into all of his friends here. And so I am really happy with these customs. Um, I might make a few minor changes in the future. Um, but I just want to thank you all so much for watching. It was a lot of fun making this video for you all. And most importantly, I hope you guys enjoyed the customs that I showed off here today. So again, thanks for watching. And I have more custom Thomas Wooden Railway model videos coming in the near future.